Breaking news, if you are over 50 years old, you can line up for your vaccine on Monday. The Department of State Health Services says we're moving into phase 1C as vaccine supply continues to increase. They say people between the ages of 50 and 64 account for 20% of COVID fatalities in Texas. In Dejanique right now, Jefferson County leaders say they're worried that the vaccine may not be reaching enough minorities. So they are teaming up with community leaders to reach Spanish speaking residents and others in typically marginalized communities. Judge Jeff Brannick says records kept by DSHS show that it appears Latino and black residents in the county are being vaccinated at lower rates than their population share. To help boost the numbers, the county will start sending out informational materials in both English and Spanish. I basically invited the uh, Spanish speaking community of Southeast Texas to get the vaccine. It's important for us, just like everybody else, to get vaccinated. We want to uh, make sure that Every member of our community, regardless of ethnicity, has the opportunity and access to the vaccine and to other health care. So Judge Brannick says the region is getting sufficient numbers of people being vaccinated. He says both Beaumont and Port Arthur have administered almost all their doses this week. And if you want to sign up for a vaccine, just head to our website. While well, developing tonight, masks are no longer on the menu at some Texas restaurants, Dej. Yeah, they're fully embracing the end of state mandates. The governor says businesses can simply do what they want. 12 News reporter James Grant is live at Gateway Shopping Center uh, with what he's seen around town today. Guys, I drove around to some popular Beaumont shopping plazas earlier today, and it's about 50-50 here in southeast Texas. Half of the people are wearing masks, the other half are not. And while the statewide mask mandate has been lifted, some local businesses and restaurants might have their own rules. We're going to be, you know, encouraging our customers to wear them. Our employees are still going to wear masks, but we're no, no longer going to enforce any sort of mask policy. Those are the rules at Rayo's. Employees are required to wear masks. Customers are not. Josh DeTorris, the manager at Rayo's, says it's been a tough 10 months. He and his staff have had lots of confrontations, some turning heated with customers refusing to wear their masks. We have had people screaming, yelling at 17-year-old kids because we're asking them to follow a state and a county mandate. Totora says it's a relief that the statewide mask mandate has been lifted. Heck yeah, we're so, we're thrilled when we heard that it was lifted and it's not about wear a mask, not wear a mask. I'm not taking either position. I'm only taking the position that I don't want to be the police officer at the front door. Further down Dallin at On Stage Hair Design, the hair salon is back open at 100% capacity and no longer requiring its customers or employees to wear masks. If the clients want us to wear a mask, we're going to wear them to just make them feel comfortable. Alexis Walker, who works at On Stage, says it feels weird walking around the salon without a mask on. But she says they're continuing to take the proper precautions, even at full capacity. We're sanitizing, cleaning everything, so I think it'll be good. Now, both Totoris and Walker say their businesses will follow any future mandates set by Governor Abbott or Jefferson County Judge Jeff Brannick. Live in Beaumont, James Grant, 12 News. All right, James, right now in Austin, Attorney General Ken Paxton is threatening to sue the city and Travis County for trying to enforce a mask mandate. Tweeting a notice, he sent officials that they have until 6 o'clock to come up with full compliance with the governor's order. Paxton's office successfully challenged Austin and Travis officials' attempt to restrict holiday restaurant operations around New Year's. Currently, only county judges can order COVID-19 restrictions if hospitalizations from the virus rise above 15 percent in a region for seven days in a row. Governor Greg Abbott says he's comfortable reopening the state without a mask requirement because hospitalizations keep declining. Now, locally, we have only 81 COVID patients in the hospital. I know that's still high, but it's the lowest number we've seen since early November. I want you to look at this graph. I just double checked before we went on the air tonight. Our moving average will continue to fall. Again, 81 total patients right now. And as we look at the regional uh, perspective, the total hospitalization rate for COVID patients has also gone down there. You can see we are roughly 12%. There's big news also on the vaccination front. 8.8 .8 million shots administered around Texas and in Jefferson County, the number tops 22,000. Hardin and Orange counties each reporting more than 6,000 shots administered. 
Well, it's definitely been a pretty gloomy day in Southeast Texas. Here's a look at our roofing 911 sky cam. Next few days could be warm. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn is in the Storm Tracker Center and looks like your hair is in place from this windy day. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I was able to avoid it. Otherwise, I had it plastered down with a lot of dippity do. Otherwise, uh, looking at a warm, humid, you don't know what dippity do. Anyway, uh, warm and humid across Southeast Texas. Yeah, I'm old school. As you can see, about 70 to the lower 70s in the triangle, lower 70s in the lakes, and we have a few showers on radar. And uh, not much change over the next few days. Current temperatures again going down uh, into the mid 60s later this evening. Maybe a few sprinkles up in the lakes area. Mid 60s overnight for your lows. That's 15 degrees above normal and slim. If any rainfall through Saturday, Sunday is our best chance of rain over the next 10. More on your storm tracker forecast shortly on 12 news. Patrick's hair is never out of place. <laughs> Folks breaking tonight. Uh, big news from Washington. A third stimulus check is on the way this afternoon. The House passed the $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill. Now, if you qualify, you could see that $1,400 check by the end of the month. It also includes a tax credit of up to $3,600 per child. The bill also included an extension of federal unemployment benefits at $300 a week, money to help schools reopen, money for increasing vaccine distribution, and funds to support state and local governments. The White House says President Biden will sign the bill on Friday. Legalize casino gambling in Texas. That's the goal of a bipartisan bill that's getting some traction among state lawmakers. And today we talked to one woman who worked in the casino industry for two decades. She says she witnessed how much money Louisiana made off Texans. And now state leaders here say they want to keep some of the money here. 12 News reporter Amelia White shares just what's being considered. With hopes that one day Texas would open up so I could, you know, wouldn't have to make that drive and work right here at home. More than 20 years, Danita A. Bate drove from Texas to Louisiana to work in the casino industry. But she said it would have been a lot easier if Texas had its very own casino. Never could understand why Texas let all that money go across that border like that. Abate said Louisiana casinos profit off of Texans dollars. Yeah, I take each one of those casinos during the week probably make two or three million a day. It's not that simple to bring gambling to the Lone Star State, but two Texas lawmakers are getting the ball rolling, saying it's time to legalize gambling. The proposed bill would create a special casino license for four resorts to be open in Texas major metro areas. Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio and Austin. So what would it take for this bill to pass? A two thirds vote is required to overturn Texas current ban on gambling, but that's not the final stamp of approval. If the bill passes in both chambers, Texas voters would have the final say. Voters must say yes to legalizing gambling. Locally, Representative Joe Desitel says he supports the bill. Take a listen from this interview from 2020. I eventually saw these Texas will see gambling. <clears throat> There's a movement for it. Uh, many of these things take many, many sessions. But House Speaker Dade Phelan is fighting against the push to legalize gambling. Tells 12 News casino gaming should not be viewed as a solution to plugging any budget issues this season. Right now, the only form of gambling that is legal in the state of Texas is paramutual betting on horse racing. A bait says it's time for Texas to start considering other forms of gambling. I think now, we're in 2021, it's time to open up and it would bring so many jobs to this area. In Beaumont, Amelia White, 12 News.